Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Today we're going to look at what I consider a grail pen for me. This is the Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero Grande Pistone Dark Hawaii. <sighs> I never thought I'd be able to own this pen. My Leonardo Ferrore Grande was given to me by Leonardo to review. However, this Grande was purchased with my own money and was only within my means because of a huge discount on Black Friday by Fonte Plumo. And my YouTube revenue generated by viewers and subscribers like you. So thank you all for supporting my channel and fueling my ability to bring reviews of incredible fountain pens like this one to you. That being said, we have to take a hard look at this pen and compare it to others. I've been writing with this pen for a couple of weeks now, and my overall impression is it's big. It's a giant pen. So I want to take a look at this giant pen and compare it to other giant pens in this episode of Land of the Giants right now. Well, this is interesting and this is a surprise. It is Friday night, uh, December 18th, and I've just uploaded my top 10 fountain pens of 2020 video to YouTube. And I went out to the mailbox and I wasn't expecting anything. Uh, but this was in the mailbox. And a big box from DHL. Back on Black Friday, Fonte Plumo had a sale and I picked up a Leonardo pen. So let's open it up and see what it is. And there's a nice big bat box in here. Again, this is from Fonte Plumo. And there's a nice note here. Let's see if we can... There's better lighting. I've got a bookmark from Fonte Plumo. It says, for your next pen. A bookmark for my pen. And your Leonardo Momento Zero Grande fountain pen. Regards, Fred. I think that says Fred. I have no idea what that says. And this is a Momento Zero Pistone Grande. And I had no conception that I'd even be able to afford one of these. Here's my other Grande Pistone. This was given to me by Salvatore Matrone uh, of Leonardo. And it is an incredible pen. But I didn't think I'd ever be able to afford one of these. Uh, but with that 20% off sale, it got it into the realm of the possible, especially with my YouTube revenue for the month. So thank you to you viewers, because you're making this kind of thing possible for me. So let's, I'm nervous. Let's take a look. And of course, it's the big box. And of course, the embossed Leonardo black on black. Very elegant. That does look like the monolith, doesn't it? Doesn't that look like the monolith? Da, da, da. open it up. <laughs> I'm so excited. And the Made in Italy card. The booklet. And here is the pen. Well, it popped out. And it's still cold. Let's take it out of its condom, shall we? Let's 
Just a little crinkle for you fans that like crinkle. Call me Chris Crinkle. It's so big, it won't come out. Why did you get it so big? That's what she said. And there it is. Wow. That's all you can say. Wow. This is the dark Hawaii. And here is the regular Momento Zero in the blue Hawaii. They're both quite stunning. Oh, yes. And that's a broad nib, ebonite feed, and the ratcheting piston. I can feel that ratcheting. Well, Merry Christmas to me. And we see the blue ink. I'm very glad that it's the same blue because I've grown to really love this Leonardo Blue, which is very similar to Hiroshizuku Kanpeki, one of my very, very favorite inks. We will do a review in the new year of this gorgeous Memento Zero Grande. So what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. After the writing sample, please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. In addition, I'm going to compare it specifically to this Leonardo Ferrore Grande Pistone and to the Opus 88 Bella, two other giant fountain pens. And there might be more where that came from as well as we go. Now, let's look at this big, beautiful, fountain pen. Overall, the pen is indeed a dark version of the Blue Hawaii Spaghetti Resin. Here is the regular Momento Zero Blue Hawaii with the dark Hawaii next to it. You can see that the colors are just slightly muted. So the dark version certainly mutes the intensity of the Blue Hawaii and whether that's good or bad is really up to your own personal taste. From the top we see a conical top to the cap and then the acrylic cap curves doesn't taper it curves gently up to two thin rhodium plated metal rings three shall be the number thou shalt count and the number of the counting shall be three five is right out and then a wonderful new feature of the momento zero grande this beautiful beveled edge on the end on the end of the cap here that slopes down to the barrel uh, where we see another rhodium ring at the top of the barrel and the barrel has another elegant curve not a taper but a curve to it down to another rhodium plated ring which separates the uh, the piston filling knob uh, from the barrel and it's also uh, conical shaped at the bottom Going back to the top, let's look at this clip. When I first reviewed the Forore Grande, I commented that using the same clip on a bigger pen made the clip look kind of out of proportion. I'm going to retract that and state now that I do like the proportion of this clip to the rest of the pen. Let's look at the Grande clip compared to the regular Momento Zero uh, clip. I had thought they had used the same clip on the larger pen, uh, but it's clear that the clip of the Grande was redesigned to purposely be slightly smaller, and the shape at the other end of the roller clip is also slightly different. See that the Momento Zero is more round, the Grande is more rectangular, and the uh, roller is slightly smaller as well. The clip is very springy and very usable. Now down the barrel here somewhere if I can find it there it is it is engraved with Leonardo Officina Italiana number 1622 and that is its serial number it is a numbered edition but not a limited edition. The cap unscrews with 
one turn, which is awesome, to reveal a two-stepped, what I like to call milk bottle shaped section of the same spaghetti acrylic and a stainless steel ring at the top of the section and the number six size rhodium plated steel nib. I expect this is a box supplied nib as Leonardo did not officially switch to Yovo until January 1st, 2021. Let's get a closer look at this nib. It has a single scroll line around the outside and then the familiar Leonardo Wings logo, Leonardo, Italy, and B for broad. And that's all laser etched. And there is the ebonite feed, which is made in-house at Leonardo and is a really nice, elegant shape and keeps this nib very, very wet. This nib and feed are fixed in place and cannot be removed. This is made explicit in the documentation. And this stainless steel ring at the top of the section is another nice touch as it keeps the ink from staining the end of the section. Another upgrade from the previous Grande is the piston filling system. It is engineered in-house at Leonardo and it's called a ratcheting piston. When you turn the piston, I'm not going to do that because it's uh, actually full of ink, uh, but you can feel the very fine ratcheting mechanism. Uh, as a bit of a tech geek, I'd love to know how that mechanism works, but it does work very, very nicely and very smoothly. The cap posts deeply and securely, but makes the pen too long to write with normally. But the fact that the cap posts means that you can write with the pen posted for short periods where you don't want to lay the cap aside. For normal writing, I write with this pen unposted. Let me take a moment here to talk about how this pen feels in the hand. I lusted after this pen because I love big pens. And because I just adore this Leonardo Momento Zero, both posted and unposted. And I also love this Ferrari Grande, uh, which also fits in the hand unposted just exquisitely. So because I loved the Momento Zero so much and those pointed ends, I naturally assumed that a bigger version would be even better because I loved the Grande. So I believe this Momento Zero Grande would be the pen for me, especially in this dark Hawaii finish. So after two weeks of writing and pushing my own brain to believe that this is superior to either of these other pens, I have to concede now that I was wrong. The pen is more difficult in my hand than either the Momento Zero or the Ferrari Grande. I'll speak more about this in my what I like and don't like segment after the writing sample and where I'll compare this pen with the other two giants. This pen retails for about $285 US, but I got mine at Fontaplumo during the Black Friday sale uh, for about $250 US. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Leonardo Momento Zero Grand Pistone with a Momento Zero, a Ferrore Grande, an Opus 88 Bella, and a Mayora Impronte Oversize. Now let's look at them posted. And here are the pens posted. And you can see that these are some pretty big pens. The Momento Zero itself isn't a small pen, but it's kind of dwarfed by all of these. especially the Opus 88. It's a very large, thick pen, but they all post very nicely. And they all have number six size steel nibs. And let's get a better look at those nibs. And there are the five steel nibs close up. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. <music> And 
we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Leonardo Memento Zero Grande. I didn't put all the names in because I just ran out of space. And it has a broad steel nib. And the ink today is, of course, Leonardo Blue. I really come to love this color. Here's the swatch for it. Leonardo Blue. It shades and sheens very, very nicely. And this is some Robert Oster Bondi Blue and some J. Urbain 1798 Kyanite du Nepal. Let's check the wetness. This is an extremely wet pen. So uh, when I unboxed this pen, I checked the nib with my loop and I noticed that the tines did not actually touch each other. There was some daylight between them. This was an indication to me that this pen would be very wet. It might indicate trouble. It might not. As we can see, it is a very thick, wet line, which is to be expected from a broad. I've been writing with it, as I said, for over two weeks now, and it is just on the edge of almost being too wet. I decided to wait until after this review to decide whether I wanted to attempt the process of making it slightly less wet. Now, the way I would do that is I would take the tines and sort of cross them one over another to get them, force them back together again a little bit. This isn't something for the faint of heart. Uh, you need to be able to check the alignment and nib slit each time you do this to ensure you're not misaligning the nib. Uh, Brian Goulet has an excellent video on how to do this and I'll link that video uh, in the description. I would only attempt this knowing that I have a Jack Hernandez just 10 minutes away that could fix it for me if I screwed it up. As to line variation, this steel nib um, is relatively stiff. It's not stiff like Chinese stiff. So there is some play. I'm not going to push it too much because it's already uh, wide enough uh, for me and I don't want it to get any wider. But it's certainly not a flex nib by any stretch. It is extremely smooth. Very glassy and of course very wet as you can see. Comparing this line to my Richard Binder chart, it comes out at 0.8 millimeters, uh, which is a Western broad, surprise, surprise, or a Japanese uh, double broad. Again, after writing with this pen for a couple of weeks now, I've encountered some random skips at the top of some downstrokes. This is something I seem to experience with almost every broad nib that I've purchased, from Leonardo to Maiora to Opus and the Visconti Homo sapiens that I had on loan. The downstrokes of the T's, B's and L's, um, anything that has this, the, the nib going down like this, course it's not going to do it now but this one randomly gave me some skips. In some pens it's more pronounced like the Visconti. In this one it's very random. I've discovered this is a touch of baby's bottom on the heel of the tipping material. I've taken a close-up photograph 
because I won't be able to get this live on camera. And I've added a red line over the shape that I'm talking about. That little valley right there uh, is baby's bottom. On this nib, it's very slight and only on the back heel of the underside of the tipping material. Of course, that's the very part that touches the paper when you stretch up to do a downstroke. So the pen is at a, a shallower angle at that point and the back side of that underside of the nib comes in contact with the paper. The larger the ball of tipping material, the more susceptible the nib can be to baby's bottom. I'm saying this from personal experience, not out of any expertise at all, but it makes sense logically and with trigonometry. I can fix this little bit of baby's bottom myself by repeating the stroke that causes the skip at the angle and the movement on a piece of 8000 grit micro mesh. So just a few downstrokes in the same direction as the problem I'm having. So like that, at that angle, at that lower angle to the page, just a few of those, and it will kind of erase uh, that little, those two little bumps uh, and make that little valley uh, a little shallower so that the, uh, uh, the ink actually touches the page at that point. It will also introduce a little bit more feedback into the nib itself. If it is too much traction for my taste, I'll just run it over some 12,000 grit micro mesh with a few uh, of those similar downstrokes like that and a few figure eights until it's back to the smoothness of my taste. This nib is not a quality control fail in any way. Let me make that perfectly clear. This nib writes and it writes very smooth and it's a gusher. So what we're talking about here is tweaking. It skips very rarely and I'll just eliminate that. Other pens like this Myora uh, and the Opus 88 uh, and especially the Visconti they all wrote out of the box but had serious skipping from baby's bottom. The first two nibs on my Momento Zero also they didn't write at all. Those were issues and I had to have them fixed. This is not an issue. Uh, this is something that's very easy to fix and it's just a slight annoyance. I just thought you viewers would be interested in what I found out. And for our quote and some reverse writing is a little bit scratchy there but it is actually very wet and I get a nice thin line out of it so it is possible and some quick writing No issues whatsoever. Very, very wet pen. A little bit of a skip there on my first downstroke. So, what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Before I discuss issues with this pen, let's talk about these other two oversized pens, the Furore Grande and the Opus 88 Bella. I mentioned earlier that the Momento Zero Grande is more uncomfortable in my hand than I thought it would be. This Momento Zero is fantastic. This Furore Grande also feels beautiful in my hand for long writing sessions. And this Opus Bella, even though it's bigger than this Momento Zero Grande, is also very, very comfortable in my hand for long writing periods. Even this Myora, which I have issues with the section not being very comfortable, but the body of the pen, and this is an oversized pen, the body of the pen fits in my hand very, very nicely and more comfortably than the Momento Zero Grande. I was totally surprised by this, and I couldn't actually figure out why 
I was feeling this way as my brain and my pride was telling me that I loved this pen even though my hand was going ow 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 hands of a stranger that he could no longer control after going back and forth among these five pens I finally figured it out even though it is really easy to see and feel and understand it is the shape of the barrel look at the difference in the width of these two pens in the place where I grip the pen between my thumb knuckle and my index finger knuckle right there and right there so those two locations right there and right there where I'm gripping the pen with this part of my hand and this part of my hand now the opus 88 has an exaggerated bulge which is even bigger than both grandes but it narrows and it tapers down in here so the thick bulge fits in my hand here and narrows down where my knuckles come together so it fills my hand with its girth and then gets narrower where it lays against my hand we can see this principle also in effect with this pen bbs 323 it has that bulging section right here and then tapers and then flares back out so the bulging section sits there where my thumb rests in the middle of my hand and then it tapers down where the pen rests in my hand itself and this is a very ergonomic pen very very comfortable now even the Myora oversize which is a big pen and it's big right here but it tapers severely compared to the Momento Zero Grande it tapers a lot more now the Frore is a big pen but it tapers down significantly as well and so it fills my hand right here where my thumb is and it tapers where it rests against my hand long writing sessions I have no issues with the Ferrari Grande but the Memento Zero Grande is it's okay right here it's just too wide back here are you going to stand by and let him destroy property And this explains why I can feel comfortable with the Furore Grande, but not with the Memento Zero Grande. This totally surprised me, but it is a learning moment in my fountain pen journey. None of this, none of this, let me emphasize, detracts from the fact that this is an incredibly gorgeous and beautifully made and engineered pen but I have medium-sized hands and if you have medium-sized hands or smaller you might want to think twice about a pen this large now for what I like and what I don't like I like everything everything about this fountain pen the resin is incredible the fit and finish is extraordinary this section with that two-step milk bottle shape might look a bit odd but it totally works for my grip I just love it this is all very smooth through here the very very wet smooth nib with the beautiful ebonite feed is just amazing the piston mechanism is flawless and this pen holds a great deal of ink the refinements of the stainless steel section ring on the top of that section and the taper of the cap edge show that Leonardo takes the improvement and refinement of their writing instruments very seriously the only criticisms I can think of are a lack of an ink window so you can see what your ink levels are and if you're running out of ink and the lack of ability to swap out nibs and feeds the fact that it has exceeded the capacity of my hand is a size issue like buying shoes that are one size too big that's not Leonardo's problem in the least that's my problem the Momento Zero and the Ferrore Grande hit that sweet spot for me perfectly the other thing to mention about the Momento Zero Grande is the price point although I think it's fair for the material the mechanism and the design of this pen it is a bit steep for a non-gold nib fountain pen for many users and there you have it 
and if you like this video please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted and that just leaves it for me to say thank you for watching and that's all she wrote I made this